wonderful to have people sex on computer, to use uh, electronic drugs without problems, to have many, many things are coming, and old people cannot adapt. They will just die and be replaced by you. Soon you will see human beings improve genetically. Like we can make genetically modified food for better, not for worse. We will be able to make also human beings better than they are today. An ethical, an ethical, I don't know what it is. The problem is to give to all humanity medicine and a better future through cloning. And the, the best of all, eternal life. Because you students, young people who are looking at me now, you may, maybe, never die. A cult leader from Quebec was questioned by members of the U.S. Congress today as they grapple with the moral and ethical issues surrounding human cloning. The witness, known as Rael, believes humans were created from the DNA of aliens. But he was invited to testify because along with his bizarre beliefs, he also claims he has the technology to clone a human being. As Adrian Arsenault reports, he says he's ready to use it. We will have it on the life. You can have it on the life. If uh, cloning uh, is allowed, and it's very important not to block it. What if it doesn't work, though? It will work. Maybe, and that's the problem. U.S. lawmakers are now scrambling to catch up with the science. Please rise and raise your right hand. Assembling an eclectic group of bioethicists, animal cloning experts, and the controversial. Asking, should human cloning be banned? Those that say ban it. Those would not be the new Armstrongs that would fly us to the moon. Dr. Zappo says he has a list of 700 people who've signed up. Rael can do one better. Says he and his 55,000 UFO-believing followers have a secret lab, a stockpile of money, and the remains of a 10-month-old baby whose parents want a clone. It will be done anyway, somewhere, someday, as thankfully nothing can stop science. I'm very, very pleased to announce that the first baby home uh, is born. She was born yesterday at 11.55 uh, a.m. in the country where she was born. So this will not give you more details, but the location, she, she's fine. We call her Eve. Are you adaptable? Welcome to Radio Freeman with your host, Freeman. You can get the latest of the occult and sorcery of your government at freemantv.com. We will bring the change that so many scientists and researchers, doctors and innovators, patients and loved ones have hoped for and fought for these past eight years. We will lift the ban on federal funding for promising embryonic stem cell research. You know, at this moment, uh, the full promise of stem cell research remains unknown and it should not be overstated. But scientists believe these tiny cells may have the potential to help us understand and possibly cure some of our most devastating diseases and conditions. To regenerate a severed spinal cord and lift someone from a wheelchair. To spur insulin production and spare a child from a lifetime of needles. To treat Parkinson's, cancer, heart disease, and others that affect millions of Americans and the people who love them. But that potential will not reveal itself on its own. Medical miracles do not happen simply by accident. They result from painstaking and costly research, from years of lonely trial and error, much of which never bears fruit, and from a government willing to support that work. 
From life-saving vaccines to pioneering cancer treatments to the sequencing of the human genome, that is the story of scientific progress in America. When government fails to make these investments, opportunities are missed. Promising avenues go unexplored. Some of our best scientists leave for other countries that will sponsor their work. And those countries may surge ahead of ours in the advances that transform our lives. In recent years, when it comes to stem cell research, rather than furthering discovery, our government has forced what I believe is a false choice between sound science and moral values. We will develop strict guidelines, which we will rigorously enforce, because we cannot ever tolerate misuse or abuse. And we will ensure that our government never opens the door to the use of cloning for human reproduction. It is dangerous, profoundly wrong, and has no place in our society or any society. Now, this order is an important step in advancing the cause of science in America, but let's be clear, promoting science isn't just about providing resources, it's also about protecting free and open inquiry. It's said that evolution is caused by adaptation. Are you really ready to take on the new changes that are coming in our uh, highly technologically advanced world? Are you able to see the ancient past as it should be really seen and recognize its connections to today? Many people say to me, Freeman, not everything's a conspiracy. <laughs> I say, well, yeah it is. When you start to look at the world from another perspective, you realize, well, first of all, the word conspiracy that they're using, they actually mean mystery. They try to tell me, Freeman, there is no mystery left in the world. We've sorted it all out, and we're on track. I'm going to get me a good job. I'm going to move into the future. I'm going to get me a house. At the same time, knowing all of these are foul, knowing that all of these will go astray, because we watch it all happening day by day as the flu and the economics and all of the other things that are stepping in the way of your belief of your future. But do you really know where your present is even at? I don't think so. Because when we start to realize that when we're breaking through this paradigm, when we're starting to understand who and what actually controls the direction of reality on planet Earth, then you start to see Everything is a conspiracy. Everything has been manufactured to create an emotional response out of you. Everything that you think about humanity has been manufactured and placed into your brain. Everything you think about religion, politics, economics has been crafted and placed in your brain. So as we sit and we start to look for solutions, we're trying to understand our world as we see it you'll never find an answer. Because the world as we see it is not the world that we exist in. It is so far beyond what we think of as real. So as we start to f seek these solutions, as we start to find our way through this crazy matrix, we must recognize where we came from, how we got there, and, and where we are. When we start to hear people like Ra'el or Bridget Boussoulet or uh, Dr. Uh, <laughs> Savros discussing their ability to clone human beings and saying that they did it, and let's realize that this was 2000. This was almost a decade ago as Congress brought Ra'el before them to speak about human cloning. Now we have Obama coming out and him saying that they are going to open the federal funding to stem cell research. But that it is profoundly wrong to use this research for human reproduction. And of course I find that quite a curious note when I actually believe that the first family might be clones themselves. And how unusual was it as I'm reporting that I think Obama and family are clones that he would come out and stand up and allow human cloning but standing against human cloning for reproduction. So what does he mean? He's discussing a type of experimentation with human cloning, therefore clone and kill technology. 
There are many things on our plate. There are many things that are coming our way. And I ask, are you adaptable? Are you ready for all these changes? Or will you fight to stop them? Now, H.G. Wells said this new world order would come about regardless of people's efforts to stop it, and that it would be a good thing for humanity, and that many a good person would die fighting against it. Where do you stand? When we start to see and seek solutions plus answers, when we start to unveil the matrix and start to see who's actually in charge and the direction that they're going, we see that life is far more advanced than, than we are ready to accept. And so therefore the solutions that we seek are still within the paradigm of the old world, which really no longer exists. But it's continually made up in front of us as Obama comes forward and starts talking about different economic situations or the national security for flu or uh, how the economy might raise itself up. Uh, and, of course, let's not forget world health care. All of these things just there to lead you astray. All of these things just to keep your mind occupied, keep you preoccupied, so that you're not seeing the real image unfolding. And of course, this is where I hope Radio Freeman steps in. Now, I know I'm ahead of my time. I know this. <laughs> and I know that it'll take time for the world to catch up with the Freeman perspective. Although it's been going on all along. Now, people ask me, they say, well, two things that I hear often are, I wish I could spew what you spew over and repeat this to people so they understand it, and how on earth do you manage to remember all of these details? Well, one, I am a very smart fellow. Always have been. Top of my class, all that kind of rigmarole. Never gave it much thought. Don't really care. But, other than that, I've been living this reality for so long. And let's realize that I started becoming a conspiracy theorist, quote unquote, in 1993. Now that's, that's later than some, you know, later than certainly Jordan Maxwell or uh, some of the others that speak on these topics. 1993 began my adventure, my exploration into the occult and sorcery of the government. My very first step was to be a protester with the Rainbow family out in Washington, D.C., out in front of Bill Clinton's White House. I began this journey, and I, I continued on it. Now, 16 years later, still talking about it, still watching as it unfolds. Now, I've covered my, my conspiracy theories from this time period forward ad nauseum. If you haven't heard all of my thoughts and theories on from Y2K up to 2010, then uh, go back and check out RadioFreeman.com and get caught up from the beginning. Believe me, you won't get bored. And there are a lot of details that I report on this show that don't stay in my brain. But the truth of the matter is, is that I've been on this trail for a long, long time. And that's why I remember what I do remember, because I was living it at the time. When others were just going about their day-to-day -day business, thinking that life was, uh, was everything normal and that they had nothing to do except for get through college and get a good job and go about their business, I was discussing the capping of the Great Pyramid with gold and the potential of life on Mars. The United States Space Force, HARP, chemtrails, that came a little bit later, about 1996, and many other topics that people just thought were outlandish, like human cloning. I was watching that day in Congress when uh, Rael spoke about human cloning. I was watching as the people just... Uh, <laughs> You know, scoffed and laughed at this man in his big white puffy spacesuit, and I understood all that. And of course, I've discussed how the difference is now that Obama has come out and said the very same thing. And there's really no reaction. The things that I talk about are ahead of their time. They're definitely keeping you at the point of the sword. We are the avant-garde of conspiracy here. I think that the time to discuss 
the ills of the world are over. Because none of this really matters. If you're still caught up in the 9-11 truth, or you're still caught up in trying to save the economic structure, or if you're still caught up trying to bring us back to a republic, <laughs> you're not going to adapt. You're not going to make the changes necessary. And the true adaptation that needs to come from all of this is outside of that box. And we must come to the recognition that this was all manufactured as a prison cell for you. It's hard to get through those steps, I know. I know. I mean, it's simple now, uh, people thinking about the economy, thinking about money. It's simple to see how felicitous this whole situation was. We see now that it's all just manufactured numbers, thoughts, and has nothing to do with precious metals. Has nothing to do with spurring people to create and innovate, but everything to do with simple control. And money is the largest faith-based system we have. It goes far and beyond any religion known to mankind. There are those that know nothing about money. <laughs> And it, in this tribal existence, they get much further, and they have far less complications. You will realize that within a non-monetary system, in a tribal-type scenario, that the human psyche is much better developed and created with far less perversions. You see, we're all isolated. We're isolated by our televisions, by our Internet, by our homes. We now see commercials on television telling children how to go out and play for an hour. <laughs> this is how we are getting lost. And this is where the ills of humanity are coming, is in this isolation. Because we are all under trauma-based mind control. Now I know that sounds like a big lofty thing, like you have some sort of Dr. Green coming after you trying to put some uh, probes in your brain or maybe eat you do some horrible things to your, your body. But it, it is not that difficult for trauma to come about. Simply every month as you're trying to make it, trying to keep that roof over your head and keep your internet on so you can listen to my show, this is trauma. And none of it's real. Not in the real world. <laughs> There's so many levels to reality, are there not? But this fear is there. I feel it every month, and every month, uh, you know, I'm back down to zero, and I start again. How am I going to make it this month? I never know. But I've been going on the path of synchronicity, and this is what brought me on the travels, and what opened up all the revelations that I've brought your way. Now, I feel a need to go back and cover a few of these revelations, because, well, there's new listeners coming along, and also... I realized that, well, I'm quite a few years ahead of my time. I mean, I was talking about the president after W not being a natural born citizen during Bill Clinton's era. Back in the early 90s. So now as I see everything start to come into view and people are going, oh my God, he's not a native, uh, native born American citizen, can't be president. He's going to go up for court January 26th in front of the federal courthouse. And uh, I'm saying, guys, this is exactly the plan. If you go back, you can research my research and realize that I've been talking about this long before anyone ever even heard of Barack Obama. When people are saying that 9-11 truth is making an impact, I'm saying, no, it was supposed to make an impact. You were supposed to know that this was an inside job. This is all part of the program. If you ask me, everything is going according to plan. But not our plan, because we don't have one. You know why we don't have a plan? Because we don't know what life is about. Why don't we know why life is about? Well, we grew up in a zoo. <laughs> And there is life on the other side of the zoo, but the zookeepers will continue to tell you that this is not so, to keep you complacent in your cell. But there is life out there, and it's very interesting and intriguing. There is a force that the Hebrews used to speak of. They called it the Shekinah. This was considered the bride of Israel. 
It was a power, a force that followed the Hebrews to their very numerous sites of existence. The Shekinah, I think, is perhaps one of the things that I've been trying to discuss because I did not really understand what it was. But as I discussed the idea of the chaos, the idea of the matrix, the idea of a Holy Spirit guiding you forth to miraculous ends that you had never even considered, leaving you field, feeling loved and nurtured. This force is, is what the Hebrews would call the Shekinah. It was the feminine version of God. It was the mothering version of God. But there was issue with the Shekinah because you can manipulate it. Because it has no sense of right or wrong. It simply is. And in this way, the black magicians can take the use of the Shekinah and use it for their own evil ends. The idea of studying the Shekinah, Hebrew, and uh, the Kabbalah comes up quite often as well. People often send me uh, questions asking me, well, you know, how can I better understand this idea of Kabbalah? How do I know what we're looking at, and how can I understand what you're telling me? What book should I read, and how can I get into a study of Kabbalah? Well, putting all aside any ideas of whether or not Kabbalah is evil, whether this is sorcery or magic, we need to set that all, of aside, all aside. We need to recognize that there is something to all of this, that it can't just be ignored, that the Bible has been following us around for, you know, a couple millennia, and that this Hebrew understanding of reality cannot be escaped. Now we're going to find that the Hebrews are the Jewish people are behind many of the great significant scientific advancements in the world. Einstein, Oppenheimer, you know, nuclear bombs, CERN, V, <laughs> ABC, you may not know that. Robert Iger, who uh, runs old Walt Disney, is, uh, is Jewish as well. And, uh, well, you know, after this show tonight, I'll actually give you a few uh, minutes head start even. After the show tonight, there will be the uh, premiere of the new restored V, uh, extraterrestrial series from ABC, which is, of course, owned by Walt Disney, which is ran by Robert Iger who is Jewish and we're probably going to see a lot of this uh, Jewish history encoded into the story and we're going to see a lot of predictive programming I can't wait to discuss that all with you it'll come on uh, immediately after Radio Freeman and I'll be there watching it and next week I'll give you my update on my thoughts and, and feelings on what they were trying to say to us and what they're showing us and how deep the programming is going and how real this situation might be. Now to fully understand the Kabbalah, to try and get into this perspective and understanding of these secret signs and symbols that we see all around us. Now most of what I see in just your average straightforward regular corporate logos, let's just have a look. If we look at McDonald's we see gold and arches. Now, of course, we know the Templars were most famous for gold and arches. And it was the Templars that then gave you money and took all the gold and the arches. Of course, then we're run out, but now <laughs> forgiven by the Pope again. Long story. Go listen to Radio Freeman. Covered a lot. And if you're not getting the whole story there, definitely check out the Free Zone Saturday nights live on Oracle Broadcasting. And, of course, all of that is backed up and saved on the freemanperspective.blogspot.com. All right, get all that out of the way. So Hebrew is, is this magical force. Actually, what some are saying is a universal mother tongue. The idea of the Hebrew letters actually being part of a hyperdimensional physical reality. So there are many researchers, and I plan to get them on my show, that are discussing the ideas of Hebrew being 
part of this hyperdimensional physical reality. So in that you would take a torus spiral, and you can look into this, and you take the torus spiral and turn it in different ways, and actually the light that would shine through it would generate the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew alphabet is all made of 72 letters, or excuse me, <laughs> 22 letters, uh, that then each have incorporated in them a separate power of God. Then you throw in with this different universal codes that come within this, such as the 72 names of God. Now these are three letters that signify three forces, a positive charge, a negative charge, and a ground. So the power is released through their unique shapes, through the patterns expressed in their lines and curves. The three-letter sequence that forms each of the 72 names operates much like a cable transmitting various blends of energy. Now, if you realize, the Hebrew le word for letter actually means pulse or vibration. And, of course, at the beginning of the Bible, we have, in the beginning was the word or the pulse or the vibration. They say that these 22 letters existed before creation and were used as mediums to transfer energy from the upper worlds, the spiritual realm we do not perceive, to our physical world. There is much to this Hebrew alphabet. Some call it the spiritual DNA. And they say that with using this power, that it was actually Moses that split the Red Sea and not God, because he understood the power of this, these letters, these words, these utterations. So as you start to try to understand Kabbalah and you want to understand how this whole thing func functions, then what you need to do is begin with the Tarot. Because really the Tarot is considered the Book of Life. And once you start to understand the patterns in the Tarot and understand the major arcana, you'll start to get greater understanding of the picture, of all of the signs and symbols that we see around us. So as I look at more corporate logos and I see, say, Arby's and its little uh, lasso hat made up its corporate logo, then what I see is R and B, and R within the Tarot is the sun. So the letter R, Resh, equals the sun in the Tarot, and is the 19th card. And then B, of course, is Beth, or in the Tarot, it is the magician. So when you see RB, you see sun magician with a cable toe, or the noose that a mason wears around his neck when going through his ritual. We can go through each and every one of these corporate logos, starting to look at each one of these in this fashion. Not simply through the Tarot, of course you have to have an understanding of Masonic ritual to connect all of the pieces together. So as you start to look at the, the, the Tarot, you start with the major arcana, it's probably the best way to begin, and you just take 1 through 21, or 0 through 21, making up the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and you watch as the progression goes along, as you go from the fool to the magician to the high priestess to the empress to the emperor, and on. And if you want to get a little deeper insight on how I felt this all related to my life, check out my show, The Chronicles of Freeman. You'll find that on freemantv.com, and I show you how my life has kind of fallen, followed these tarot cards through and up to, right now, the Hierophant, which I seem to be at this point as my teacher to you. Next is lover, so I'm truly excited about that. But each of the letters within the, in the Hebrew not only have a, a title such as Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Deleth, Ha, Wa, and, and on through the letters, they also have a meaning. And so as you look at the letter A, it actually means ox. Or you look at the letter B, it means house. Or the letter G, camel. And this is where I got my understanding for the camel cigarette pack. So when you look at a camel cigarette pack, you'll see that the, the Great Pyramid is missing. You only have two of the pyramids in the picture. And standing in between where the Great Pyramid is, is a camel. Now camel in Hebrew means G. 
And so therefore we're looking at a large G, which of course is emblazoned on every Masonic temple. Sometimes it's re replaced by the Hebrew letter Yod, which actually means hand. Now when we look at the, the concept of G, then what you have to do is take the tarot cards, the major arcana, these 22 cards, and place them into the tree of life. So the tree of life has 10 sephirah, and you can go look it up on the internet, and you'll see that there is this pattern there. And you can take this tree, and in between each of the sephirah, or dots, on the tree of life is a line, and each line is representing a tarot. And when you look at the, the line for G, or Gimel, it is the path that goes straight up the center from earth to heaven, or from Malkuth to Kether. And it is on that path that one will travel through the abyss, abyss known as Deleth. This is where Aleister Crowley was known to have gotten lost. The camel is supposed to take you safely across this path, but you must have a proper mind to do so, and much study to understand what you're doing, or you will get lost. So this is not something that people should take lightly, and also there's technologies that have been incorporated in this whole study that have been lost. They are coming back, however. Many of the high technologies from our ancient past are now coming straight forward to us today. I don't know whether Rex Church of the uh, Church of Satan, whether or not his Ragnarok device is actually going to open a portal to the other side. But it's highly possible that CERN will. Let's jump to a little bit of CERN news, since uh, CERN will be launching this month as well. Now you will find all of these articles placed in the Space War News there on Freeman's blog, the freemanperspective.blogspot.com. I highly recommend keeping up with those, because I, I find them very intriguing, and I do update them almost daily. So the latest in CERN uh, concerns is the God Machine critics to the UN experiment an affront to human rights. With the CERN Particle Physics Lab due to start shooting particles around its Large Hadron Collider, which of course are named Alice and Atlas. Now let's just realize, you know, we have gone over this a bit, that Alice through the looking glass is part of this mind control campaign, but we're also looking at this idea of going into the other dimension. And then Atlas, of course, was the king of Atlantis. And I have some curious stories about Atlantis coming up as well. So the Large Hadron Collider is again launching this month. We call it Red Button Day. And the first particle collisions are expected in December. So the anti-Large Hadron Collider campaigners are on the warpath again. A new group calling itself the Committee on CERN Experimental Dangers, or Concerned, will submit a complaint on the 3rd of November. Is that today? Yes. To the Human Rights Committee of the UN calling for the work at the LHC to be stopped because it threatens life on Earth and so violet, violates the complainant's human rights. Some physicists have suggested that the extreme high energy of the collisions that will take place at the LHC could create postulated entities including my, mini black holes and strangelets, which seem to replicate themselves over and over again until utter destruction. Critics say that the tiny black holes could swallow, swallow up the Earth or that strangelets could convert all matter into strange matter. But leading physicists who have studied the matter say that well-established principles all but guarantee that neither catastrophe would occur. But of course they really have no idea. It was the same when they launched HARP. It was the same when they exploded a neutron bomb in the atmosphere. They don't know. They really don't know what's going to happen when it goes on. And why do I remember the events of HARP so well? Well, I was awake and aware during that time and watching it all happen. I watched as all the st uh, states lost power when they turned that damn thing on. I watched as the, uh, the whole half or portion of the apparatus melted because they had gone too far. Now, the CERN scientists are saying they were going to launch this at safety uh, power generation, which <laughs> made me wonder as I was reading that article, and you'll find that there, uh, what will they do when they're not using safety? Uh, it's, uh, you'll get more to that. All right, so... Uh, 
The main argument in these reviews has been that collisions of similar energies happen daily in the upper atmosphere as cosmic rays slam into atoms in the air, and so far, Earth has survived. So concerned and similar groups argue that since such review committees are convened by CERN and staffed with particle physicists who have devoted their careers to the results of the LHC experiments, there is a con conflict of in interest. They are calling for a halt to CERN's work. Now, <laughs> some may uh, believe and have actually announced that CERN would be stopped from the future. Yes, Dr. Danish physicist Dr. Holger Beck Nielsen and Dr. Ninomaya from the from Japan claim nature is trying to prevent the LHC from finding the elusive Higgs boson called the God particle. The theoretical boson could explain the origins of mass in the universe if physicists can find the darn thing, they say. So one could even say that we have a model for God, said Dr. Nielsen. He rather hates Higgs particles and attempts to avoid them. While it is a paradox to go back in time and kill your grandfather, physicists agree there is no paradox if you go back in time and save him from being hit by a bus. In the case of the Higgs in the collider, it is as if something is going back in time to keep the universe from being hit by a bus. It must be our prediction that all Higgs producing machines shall have bad luck, <laughs> Dr. Nielsen told the New York Times. So when they are saying that they have uh, this multi-billion dollar machine that has been taking 20 years to create and that it's, uh, you know, it's featured in Daniel Brown's <laughs> Angels and Demons book and might possibly cause black holes or punch holes into the other dimension or at least give them the understanding necessary to find out why there is mass in the universe. One of these situations may occur unless time steps in and shuts it down from the future. This will be a very curious thing to watch. I, I am highly intrigued and, and somewhat concerned about CERN. You know, of course, their corporate logo being 666 with the hyperdimensional portal. And if I look at this spectrum as I have been, then when I look to all of this influence, I absolutely see the destruction of matter with the atomic bomb, the recreation of matter with the use of uh, creating uh, matter out of photons, light into mass, light into matter, and now trying to figure out how to get the mass back into it, because the photon experiment was nearly massless, uh, I see a transportation teleportation device attempting to be created. Now you couple with this the mind-preserving technology that is coming out of MIT and realize that they are saying that they can transmit your soul via, via radio frequency waves then you can also tap into HARP, being that it is just one of the largest radio frequency antennas in the world. What's going on here? So that is the beginning of our strangeness in uh, whether or not we'll be able to adapt when we start to understand the paradigm that we actually exist in. We want to go about and say that we know what's going on in the world and that everything's just straightforward and Freeman, not everything's a conspiracy. Uh, but yet, I continually find them, <laughs> and I continue to see this puzzle as it unfolds, before it unfolds. And what I try to do is attempt to tell you about these situations so that you know that this was already there long before they announced it to you. So as I was speaking about Obama and the coupling of the DOD with NASA and, and using asteroids, and next thing you know, we have a large asteroid come near the planet, uh, you know, Hopefully you've been forewarned. Hopefully you can see this is all part of the game plan, that everything is going according to plan. Now, the latest asteroid was the one that came in over Indonesia and uh, now is raising new fears about Earth's defenses once again. And this was October 8th, uh, right before the bombing of the moon. The rock crashed into the atmosphere above South uh, Sulawesi, Indonesia, the blast was heard by monitoring station 10,000 miles away. Scientists are concerned that it was not spotted by any telescopes and that had it been larger, it could have caused a disaster. The asteroid, estimated to be around 10 meters or 30 feet across, hit the atmosphere at an estimated 45,000 miles per hour. 
The sudden deceleration caused it to heat up rapidly and explode with the force of 50,000 tons of TNT. Now luckily, due to the height of the explosion, estimated between 50 or 9 to 12 miles above sea level, no damage was caused on the ground. The fireball was spotted by locals in Indonesia and a YouTube video taken that day appears to show a large dust cloud consistent with the bright daylight fireball. Now the thing is is that here I was announcing and, and following all of these type of things and especially the curious ones such as the one that went over Harp facility back in 99 a meteor that came in went directly over the facility exploded in the atmosphere causing the clouds to disperse at a thousand miles an hour causing a sonic boom that got the people of Anchorage to run to their basements thinking it was the end of the world and three hours later an earthquake. Now again, as I discuss this, I always go back to Milosevic accusing the U.S. of using HARP technologies to cause earthquakes and floods. And this brings me to a curious note on my uh, report on Red Ice Creations, the Sorcerers, or what, what did he title that? Obama Cloning and the Sorcerers of Atlantis. And I was reading through the comments, and of course I understand that thousands of people have watched this, and only a few leave messages, and of course it's typically the ones that feel the need for ceremonial pissing. And so therefore you will mostly see negative comments left on videos, and that is because these people can't help but spew their filth onto the picture. Right, get up and do it yourself then, my friend. But one of the comments said that, well, he's just saying that you can't get the USA Today archives, and I went and Googled it, and sure enough, there's USA Today archives. Yes, my friend, there are USA Today archives on the internet, but you will not find the paper, the actual headlines that were placed in the newspaper that day. You are not going to find the stories as I am reporting them because they don't database the USA Today. So, yes, you may find the USA Today on the internet, but this is not a database newspaper as all the others are that you can go to the library, check microfiche, go and check the old papers, they do not exist. So just realize that many of these stories I wish I still had. I wish someone had saved all of the newspapers from USA Today from December of 1999 so that I could show you these headlines like Masons stop, or Muslims stop the Freemasons from capping the Great Pyramid with gold. Absolutely the headline on USA Today December of 1999. Or Milosevic accusing US causing earthquakes and floods. So as I was tracking these meteors, and, and no one's too sure actually what they are, it's, they, they say they think they're meteors, they think they're bolides or fireballs, uh, but no one was too sure. Because of the unusual occurrence of the sonic boom, and then of course being followed by an earthquake, which they're not really correlating to the same story. I am. I see this as part of the blue-green preparation as they start to get the whole thing ready as they start to, to test different aspects of the show. And I do believe that these are manufactured and not actual meteors or bolides. I could be wrong, but of course they don't know either, so let's just see how it goes. But they are absolutely announcing that these are very strange occurrences and they have no idea what they are, so the question is open. And as I began to report all of these to you, and of course this is all in Space War News as well, as I began to report these to you, all of a sudden they announce incoming bolides will be classified secret. So all of a sudden we're not getting the reports anymore. Except for this large bolide that came in over Indonesia. Now the, the curious thing about this bolide was that it was the largest since 1994. Now they are saying that one report indicated a bright fireball accompanied by an explosion and lingering dust cloud. According to experts at NASA JPL, Near Earth Object Program Office in Pasadena, California, Don Yeoman, Paul Chodas, and Steve Chelsea, the blast is thought to be due to the atmospheric entry of an asteroid more than 30 feet or 10 meters in diameter. Due to atmospheric pressure, this thing exploded. 
My understanding is that this may have been the largest object to strike the Earth since the fireball near the Marshall Islands in the South Pacific on February 1, 1994, said Clark Chapman, a noted specialist in asteroids and planetary science. So the question came was, why wasn't this asteroid observed before it hit? Almost certainly it was detected and presumably immediately identified as an explosion of a large meteoroid rather than, say, an explosion of a human-made device in the atmosphere. But these satellites are secret in the past. The establishments controlling them have delayed releasing the data for weeks or months. Scientists hope that they will reverse this policy of secrecy. This event will demonstrate whether the wall of secrecy is coming down again or not. Evidently, because of the passage of weeks since the event, there has been no decision to release the data promptly. This is all part of the program, folks, and as you start to uh, adapt to where we actually are, as you start to recognize the, the levels that we're at, when we're punching holes into the other dimension, creating human sperm and eggs out of, out of the ether, basically, you know, we, we no longer even need humans for reproduction. They can take stem cells and they can create sperm, they can create eggs, and they can create humans using this technology. Now, the issue comes also in the ancient past as we start to look at our situation today and how we've got here then we realize that there is a lot of evidence to suggest that this type of cloning experimentation was going on long before way back in the day of the Elohim what are some are now calling the Anunnaki I disagree with that term but of course I'm using the man that uses the term to make the disagreement because he uses the term Anunnaki in two different ways and I'm speaking of Zechariah Sitchin. When he speaks of the Anunnaki they were a race that the Elohim brought with them. It is the Elohim that Ra'el says are teaching him and guiding him towards this human cloning program. The Anunnaki were a genetically crafted race that were brought with the Elohim to do the mining on planet Earth, according to Zechariah Sitchin. He later then goes on to consider them all Anunnaki, but I found a fallacy in, a, in that type of uh, lingo as he was talking because these Anunnaki seem to be the very greys, the very aliens that we think are from some other planet. But if we were to follow this story, then they would be a genetically crafted race that were designed to be subterranean and actually live and exist here on planet Earth with us at this time. I believe that it's them that are doing these ab abductions and taking the humans and crossbreeding, creating a hybrid that will be able to exist on the surface as we move into this unimaginable future. Now, there's more on the Space War news, and uh, one that I find very curious is the Chinese say they're building an impossible space drive, the M-Drive, or electromagnetic drive. Chinese researchers claim they've confirmed the theory behind the impossible space drive and are proceeding to build a demonstration version. If they're right, this might transform the economics of satellites, open up new abilities for space exploration, and give the Chinese a decisive military advantage in space. If you go back and you look at my, my research, you look at uh, the posts that I've put under articles, you will see that I, I have outlined this road to World War III. And of course, a large portion of this is due to Russia-China alliance. I'm constantly talking about the Phobos Grunt mission, which the China Alliance are launching to Mars's moon. Now, of course, NASA is saying that Mars's moon would be a much better choice than the moon. They'd rather see them go to either an asteroid or one of Mars's moons, most likely Phobos, uh, instead of a return to the moon. All of the NASA reports that are coming out I find truly curious because one level they, they you know of course bomb the moon or more specifically stated they used a kinetic weapon to strike the moon on another level they say we can't go to the moon we can't afford it I'm sorry and we can't afford to keep up with all these killer asteroids and oh what are we gonna do what are we gonna do well I know what you're gonna do you're gonna militarize the space program you're ready to get to 
your Star Trek dream. I'm certain Gene Roddenberry was amazing. Well, it seems that Project Disclosure wanted to move things along, and so they sent information along to Barack Obama about Disclosure and the Disclosure Project. They also sent it to another head of state of a G7 nation, which is unconfirmed. Some believe it's France's President Sarkozy. So in a letter dated October 24, 2009, Disclosure Project's director Stephen Greer states, The summary of the special presidential briefing that we have provided to the president and to his senior military and intelligence team, the full briefing contains detailed information on the projects, pr project code numbers, names, co corporations, locations, etc., associated with the UFO ET subject. In short, the President now has the key information that he needs to act. The President must now engage in ex executive action to oversee, control, and direct these operations for the benefit of the American people and the world. This special President briefing has also been provided to the head of state of at least one G7 nation. So as we start to look into uh, official disclosure of the extraterrestrial life, uh, Let's see, it says, reports are saying an official announcement by the Obama administration disclosing the reality of extraterrestrial life is imminent. For several months, senior administration officials have been quietly deliberating behind closed doors how much to disclose to the world about extraterrestrial life. Dissatisfaction among powerful institutions such as the U.S. Navy over the decades-long secrecy policy has given a boost to efforts to disclose the reality of extraterrestrial life and technology. Now you will find all of this at TheExaminer.com and uh, also it's linked up at Space War News. This is Dr. Michael Sala who I've had on the show discussing ET disclosure. Now I think the ET disclosure is going to come from this Phobos mission. I think that we're going to find a potential extraterrestrial civilization out there. I wonder how they're going to use this data. I wonder what they're going to do with it because of the idea of Mars's moons not showing up until 1877. Look it up for yourself. It's true. So it certainly couldn't be ancient humans. But I, that's how I expect them to bring this all forth, is the idea of our ancient past meeting our present and realizing that humans have been on other planets in our solar system. Have built large pyramids on Mars. So are you adaptable? Are you able to take all of this knowledge in and start to reorient your reality? But certainly, you're all going to be broke very soon. And this is not something to be feared. The truth is, this could bring you all together. And as you start to come together in this realization of humanity and who you all are, this is, of course, the ones that aren't shooting at you, when you start to realize how comforting it is to have a tribe around you, to have the people that you need next to you, people you can talk to, who can counsel you, and help you through, and feed you a meal. And you start to realize what life is really about. And the adaptability that we really need to achieve at this point is an understanding of this nature of humanity. Not the one that's being projected to you through your multimedia nightmare, but the one that is real and true in the hearts of all humans. This is the reality that we need to understand to transform the world. So if you're spending all of your time hunting down the vipers, trying to discuss, discover, and realize who your enemy is, I'll tell you consistently and constantly it is you. You are your own worst enemy. And the problem being that right now we have no reason, no understanding of the purpose of life. When we start to realize that we are mentors to one another, that we can help one another through the situation, that we are not all isolated as it seems, and that when things do go awry, we will come together in force and help one another and help everyone, we'll start to realize what life is actually about and adapt. 
And these problems that we see, the ones they're projecting to us over and over again, will recognize the true illusory ma meaning of all of these. That none of it's real. Politicians are not trying to help you. They are not trying to get things done for the betterment of humanity. Doctors aren't there to save your life. And teachers are there simply to indoctrinate you. They don't want to be this. No one wants to be the things that they've been forced into being. They got into these with altruistic feelings. And that is the true spirit of humanity. And it is these altruistic beliefs that will come to the fore when we are released from this game of life that we think is so real. So I want to end this show now so that I give you enough time to go out and check out ABC's V as they try to unfold the story of the evil humanity destroying their planet that needs to be saved by this extraterrestrial race bringing a new world order. <laughs> How close is this going to be to our reality? How close are we already? Well, there'll be lots more. Definitely check into the Free Zone Saturday night, 8 p.m., Oracle Broadcasting. Help spread the word for me to go uh, spread Freeman TV far and wide if you uh, so feel the, the need. And thank you all so much for the kind comments and words and all of the emails that I get and even the letters I get in the mail, which you can send to the P.O. Box. It's still being forwarded. I will have a new P.O. Box shortly. But thank you all. You know, I, I, I do deserve a cookie, and thank you for that. Uh, and all these gifts and wonderful knowledge that you send my way. I, I just, I, I, you know, I can't believe it. I'm overwhelmed by it all. Thank you all so much for everything you do. So please, uh, once you're done with this show and, you know, if you're going to sit down and, and watch V and get that indoctrination, you know, recognize and rip it apart. Study it. Don't just watch. And uh, we'll talk about this more next week. And until then, get out there, stretch, play, have some fun, recognize what life is about, realize that love is the key ingredient of the universe. The rest of this is all illusion, and we will break through this paradigm, but you must be ready to adapt. So, here I am, loving you all. See you next week. Well, is it just a remains for vibrations? The earth is gonna grow. Things like love.